today, let's go from this to this and also from this to this in a very few quick steps. Let's get started. I'm going to show you two methods of using chroma key or what's commonly called green screen. One using a very sharp and clear green that is very consistent and a second method of using a background that may have some wrinkles or some lighting issues with it. So first of all, I'm going to come up to the media pool and pull down my image that has a very good solid green color to it. I'm going to move it up to video track 2 because it needs to be in the foreground. If you did not already have video track 2 created, by just dragging and dropping it, it will automatically create video track 2 for you. Next, I'm going to drag down my clip that I'm going to use for a background, put it down in video track 1, and then extend it out so it's at the same time as the top track. Next, I'm going to go over to my Fusion tab and bring it up. Just slide these over so they're kind of in the center of the screen. And click the left button so that it opens up the viewer. Now with this node selected, I'm going to press Control Space on my keyboard. And if I type in just Delta Keyer, which I'm looking for, it will pull it up for me. If you know the abbreviation that you, for this key, which in this case is DK, you could just type in DK and that would bring it up for you as well. So I'm going to go ahead and select OK. I'm just going to put it right in line where I need it. Next, I'm going to slide up and select the eyedropper so I can hold and click down the left button on my mouse, slide it over to the green, and release the mouse, and it sets the background color for me. When I go back over to my Edit tab now, I can see that the green screen has been taken away and the gold is now showing through. If I press the play button, nice and smooth and away we go. That is how easy it is when you have a nice solid green background. Next, I'll show you how to do it where the background quite isn't as good as it should be. The second method will use a background that is not quite as clear and sharp as the first one. I'm going to pull down this clip that I pulled off the internet of a guy dancing. And I'm going to slide it up so it's in video track 2 because that's going to be the foreground. And as you can tell, the background is not quite as good and sharp and clear as the other one. Lots of wrinkles and shadows. Well, the second option that I'm going to go through with you will help clear that up and make it look good. Instead of going to the Fusion tab this time, we're going to go over to the Color tab. And what we're going to do is make sure that our qualifier is selected right here. By doing so, you just click the eyedropper and that will give you the qualifier. Next, I'm going to create a second node up here. And to do so, I'm just going to press Alt Space on my keyboard. Now this is for Windows. And it gives me the second node. This will show all my changes and keep the first one clear. Going back down to my qualifier, I'm going to slide over to HSL, select the down arrow, and then go down to 3D. Once I do that, I'm going to come over to the eyedropper right next to it and select the eyedropper that has the plus sign. What we're going to do next is just go through here and hold the mouse button down and try to catch all these different shades of green all the wrinkles, all the highlights, all the bad lighting, and just try to get a sample of all of it. You can stop and then start over again and just keep on drawing. And this is all by taste, so you can do as much or as little as you want. I've noticed in experience that the more you can get the better sample, the better it will turn out. So I try to get everywhere that I can see where there's different colors, wrinkles, shades, a little bit of everything, trying to stay away from the talent there. And there's no rhyme to reason with drawing these lines. I just try to get every little speck that I can. Like right over here is a white speck. I'm going to try and make sure I get that. And then down toward the bottom here, there is some more dark green shades and a few more wrinkles around behind him. So I want to make sure that I get all those as well. And this just comes with playing with it and experiment with it and trying to see what you can do to get the best shade that you can. So 
So I'm going to go with that. Now if we look over here where our node that we added, it looks just the opposite. The green is still there, but our talent is now grayed out. So what we'll come down is we'll come down here to the invert key, select it, and now you see that the talent has come above and the background is just grayed out. What we're going to do next is we need to add an alpha output. So what we'll do is in this area we'll just right click our mouse, go down to add alpha output, it adds it for us right there and then we'll connect it with this blue box. And now the green screen is all gone. However, if we kind of scroll in here a little bit, we can tell there's still some green highlights around him, and that is not good. You want to make sure you try to get rid of that as much as possible. One quick and easy way to do that is if you go down to Dispel and click this box, it takes away almost all of it. It's not quite as bad as it was. Now come down to taste, down here where it says matte finesse. You basically go in here and adjust these numbers until you get to where you like it. I've had some luck with using the, no the noise and just clicking on it and moving my mouse around and also the in and out by doing that and it cleans it up very well. You can use the clean black, clean white, and blur. Just be careful with it because you may be starting up some of the other colors that are around it. Now when we go back to the edit tab, you can see our talent sitting out here in front of this black screen. What I'm going to do now is pull down a few images that I have. One of a brick wall, second of a library, and the third one we'll just use a spooky scene. Now when I come up and press my play button, we've got him dancing in front of a brick wall. When he gets through with that, he'll continue on and dance in front of the library. After that, he's going to dance in front of a spooky house. And that's how easy it is to use when you have a green screen that's not quite ideal. Just takes a little time, draw more of those lines, and try and get as good a good sample as you can. I hope you learned something, and if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe below. Thank you for watching.